Hi, I'm Secretary of State Nellie Gorbea. Thank you for joining us today, whether it's here in the State Library, socially distant, all masked up, uh, or virtually, even, even more socially distant. Um, I do want to note uh, for attendees that this briefing is being recorded on WebEx. We're here today because every single one of us has a role to play in defending our democracy. Clear communication between election officials, law enforcement, and the media has never been more important. There is a lot of noise this year and many attempts to undermine the faith of our democracy, the faith that we have in our democracy. We need to look no further than yesterday's announcement by the FBI and the Director of National Intelligence regarding disinformation campaigns by foreign actors aimed at voters in two different states. That kind of announcement helps us realize that these threats are real and constant. So it's encouraging to see so many of Rhode Island's most respected journalists here this afternoon. And, and let me just say that the goal of this discussion is to set expectations over the next few weeks so that we have good communication. Good communication makes it easier for all of us to do our jobs and to better serve the public. We have a terrific lineup of speakers here with us today from all aspects of elections and law enforcement. We have uh, with you, and I want to first thank uh, our esteemed Attorney General, Peter Nerona, who is working with my office to protect voter rights, something that's near and dear to both of our hearts. We also have Colonel James Manny of the Rhode Island State Police, who has been a terrific partner in maintaining the security of our election systems. Thank you also to Bob Raposa, Executive Director of the Board of Elections, for taking time out at a very busy time to join us virtually, and for the incredible amount of work that you and your team are putting in during what is a very different election year. We're also joined by members of our local and regional FBI office who are out there every day fighting misinformation and disinformation campaigns, among all the other things that they do in a regular election cycle. And so I want to thank uh, particularly Special Agent in Charge Joseph, uh, Joseph Bonavolanta and his team. And finally, we have Jessica Cohn, Program Specialist at the Election Infrastructure Information Sharing and Analysis Center, otherwise known as EIISAC. She's going to speak to us on election security. Thank you, Jessica, for joining us and for all the work your organization does with my office and state and local offices here and across the country to secure our elections. We also have several more partners on the local, state, and federal level when it comes uh, to providing safe and secure elections, like the Rhode Island National Guard and, at the core of the elections, our local boards of canvassers. They have been integral in this unusual election year and we're grateful for all their hard work ensuring Rhode Islanders can cast their ballot safely and securely. And thank you to the journalists who are here today. You play a vital role in delivering accurate information to Rhode Islanders. We can run the smoothest, most secure election in the world, but if that's not communicated to the public, and if people don't trust the process and the results, it doesn't really matter. We're lucky here in Rhode Island to have a press corps who understands the impact of their reporting. And I want to thank you really from the bottom of my, my heart, because I know these are really, really crazy times, uh, for all the work that you've been doing uh, throughout, throughout them. So as I said at the top, uh, the goal of this discussion is to set expectations through the next several weeks so that we can all better serve the public. Today, we want to clarify, to, we want to clearly lay out who handles what in the election sphere, how they handle it, and where members of the media can go get answers. We'll also examine election topics that are making headlines nationally and how they may or may not apply here in Rhode Island. And let me be clear, we want to make sure that this discussion does not end here today. We hope that these connections that we're making in this session will establish strong communication channels 
that we can all use to make sure voters are getting accurate information. Okay, now for some housekeeping. I should have like, there should be like the background music for housekeeping now. All right, to make things a little easier for folks who are joining us virtually, we'll have each speaker come up to the podium one at a time to deliver their remarks, then take questions. We'll take questions from reporters in the room first and then from those virtually. So we're not constantly muting and unmuting. If you're participating virtually, please enter your name in the chat so we can call on you for your question. And please note in the chat that you'd like to ask a question and we'll make sure to call on you during the Q&A period. I'd also like our speakers at the podium to repeat any questions uh, they receive in the room out loud in case people watching virtually can't hear it. All right, ready? Let's begin. So we'll begin with the voting, the, the overview. As you can see by the speakers we have here today, elections is a team sport. In Rhode Island, elections are run in collaboration with my office, the State Board of Elections, and the local boards of canvassers. We have these great infographics available on the table near the door, which spell out everybody's responsibility. And I'm going to point over there for the, they're there on that table behind you. Right? Oh, at the end, sorry, that way. Okay. Um, we also work, particularly this year, with law enforcement groups, as you see here today, to protect the integrity of every vote. Rhode Island's Secretary of State is the chief state election official for federal purposes. My biggest roles locally as state Secretary of State are to maintain the central voter registration system, prepare ballots, and provide information to voters. We have just recently upgraded the CVRS, the Central Voter Registration System, to meet cybersecurity best practices. I can't give you the whole playbook of what we've done to it, but we are protecting it from hackers. We're actively protecting it from hackers, and we've worked with our partners at the local, state, and federal levels to develop several layers of security. Perhaps most importantly, we have contingency plans in case something does happen. We've also wor been working over time this year to provide voters with trusted information through public service announcements, PSAs, and media interviews, and by directing Rhode Islanders to vote.ri.gov and the United Way's new voter hotline at 211 for any election question. We have a way for anyone to flag potential misinformation to our office, just sending an email to misinfo at sos.ri.gov. Again, that's misinfo at sos.ri.gov. We also have some handouts on misinformation on the table outside as well. And this year, we have a new data visualization on voter turnout that I'm pretty sure you've all seen. We're at about 140,000 votes cast already. The data visualization is a great way to democratize the data that we're collecting through the modernization of our election system. So these are some of the key activities that my office is undertaking this year. And I'll take any questions at this point about um, my office uh, and, and what I've just spoken about. Uh, or you can just wait till the end and then ask questions. Either way. Questions? I think we literally, I'm going to look at Nick. Who's receiving that one? Nick, right? Who's receiving the, the misinformation? I don't believe we have. I would have heard about it already. We literally are announcing it today as a tool. Oh, sorry. Can I repeat the question? That was, I forgot my own rule. All right. The question is, have we received anything at the misinfo at sos.ri.gov? And I'm looking at my staff and not yet because we're actually releasing it today. I don't think people knew about it before today. So. How often do I know when are we getting the election results? That, you can hold that question. It'll be first in queue for Bob Raposa at the State right. Board of Elections. Right. Anyone else? On the misinformation, mm -hmm. you know, where, how do you identify that? Or where do you draw the line between misinformation versus free speech? So that's a, a really tough one. 
let me make sure that we go through all of the security personnel first, and then we'll come back to it, because it is a really good question. It's one that I've grappled with a lot as I've sat in these conversations. Um, yes? Uh, you talked about uh, the announcement yesterday by the federal government. Have there been any attempts to hack into the Rhode Island uh, electrical okay. system here? Now I'm remembering to repeat the question. Have there been any... Um, uh, Yes. Have there been has there been any notification of any hacking into Rhode Island central voter registration systems? Yes. No, there has not been. Okay. Anybody else in the room? Okay. Yep. Okay. The question is regarding voter fraud. Is there any history, documented history of voter fraud in Rhode Island? And I'm supposed to answer in English and then in Spanish. Jeez. Uh, okay. So um, the answer is uh, there was a case in the last decade where people were using wrong addresses from which to vote from. I think there were like three or four people, if I remember correctly. I don't know if the attorney general remembers that, but it was the previous. It was a few attorney generals ago. Um, and that is the only case that has ever been documented and, and prosecuted for any kind of voter fraud here in Rhode Island. Eh, la contestación es que hubo unos individuos, dos o tres individuos que hace, en los últimos diez años hubo un caso donde las personas utilizaron una, con una dirección comercial en vez de residencial para inscribirse, para votar, para usar como para su... Eh, dirección de, de inscripción, y ese caso lo llevó el, el eh, procurador general de ese tiempo. Así es que, pero ese ha sido el único caso que ha habido eh, documentado de fraude electoral. Ok, ¿any other ones? Okay. Uh, the question is, how do I, um, uh, how, I'm terrible. How do, you reassure how, do I, how do I reassure Rhode Islanders that their, their road is secure, especially given the FBI report to, uh, tomorrow? Bueno, uh, the way is in part, actually, I wouldn't have wanted to have that news yesterday, but it turns out it worked out really well, uh, in that we are communicating with the public here in Rhode Island what are the processes that are in place and where there is a problem and where there isn't. I think telling the truth to Rhode Island voters is the best way that we can gain their trust. Eh, la mejor forma que podemos combatir eh, la desconfianza en el sistema electoral es diciendo la verdad. Y estamos aquí para comunicar cuáles son todos los procesos de seguridad que tenemos y eh, eh, vamos a ir de diferentes agencias de seguridad también. Así es que eso es comunicándonos con el pueblo, dejándole saber dónde hay un problema y dónde no hay problemas. Es la forma que vamos a poder eh, desarrollar esa confianza del electorado. Thanks. Spanish is a little bit longer than English. Um, yes. I'll look at the breakdown, but what do you expect more people to vote by mail in Rhode Island or at the polls? So, so. Could you please? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, so the question is, who are, where do we expect more people to vote? Uh, it's really hard to say right now. We have about, I think, a, we had 170,000 roughly mail ballot applications, and, or a little bit over that, uh, mail ballots that we've sent out. Um, you know, and, and early in-person voting has been much more uh, successful and popular than I think in our wildest dreams. It's been going very smoothly here in Rhode Island. And I think that's an important point because as people are listening to other stories from other states, actually I've gotten some confusion from local residents about not wanting to go to early voting because they think it's going to be a long line and actually that's not the case here in Rhode Island. So I think it's really too hard to say. I, um, I think that in the end at least half of the voters will have voted either by mail or in person or close to that maybe, which really helps us with election day, November 3rd, because we're doing all of this because we're in a, a pandemic. And we wanted to 
uh, make sure that we could keep people as safe as possible. We wanted to make sure that voters did not have to choose between safeguarding their health and their constitutional right to vote. So having mail ballots, early in-person voting, gives people other avenues for exercising their constitutional right that's not November 3rd. You think it'll be 50 /50? I think it'll be close to that. I mean, we'll see. It, we'll see how many mail ballots end up coming in. That's really the big uh, variance. You expect to try once again to memorialize that in law? Um, some of these things have already been, uh, do, I, do I expect uh, to memorialize these things in law? Some of these things have already been memorialized, like early in-person voting was done through uh, a law change. Um, the rest, yeah, we're going to look at what worked really well, because in the end, our election system was designed for different times with different technology. And, and so I think it's definitely time to review it. We'll look at lessons learned and, you know, things that we could do better uh, and things that people really loved. Uh, after this election is over. Uh, we've, the Board of Elections, myself, and the Boards of Canvassers have always done that after the election, and that will lead us to what laws might need to be changed 